Hello everybody. We're going to be um, painting a seahorse today as you can see. So I've just drawn out my seahorse. I encourage you to do the same with a pencil and I'm just erasing it lightly so that it doesn't show through the watercolor when we're painting over top of the outline. And this is going to be a whimsical type of seahorse. Um, so if you've seen my, uh, what do you call it, flamingo, whimsical flamingo from a, a while ago, this is following in, in that theme, okay? So what are we going to start with here? I'm going to make this maybe like a pink, orange combo, I'm thinking. Um, what I'm going to start out with is actually these flowers that are going to be, I'm going to call them the wings of the seahorse. Uh, and you can choose whatever colors you'd like. So, sorry guys, I should have thought of this ahead of time, what I'm going to do. No, sorry, we're going to paint the body first because if we can establish first the uh, base colors, like what, what the colors in general look like, then we'll know what colors to paint the flowers. So I'm going to start with the head portion. And what you want to do, so obviously you're following the outline of your seahorse, but you want to be combining your colors so that it creates this uh, multi-color, beautiful transition. So there we go. I started with yellow. I added pink. That pink was really intense though. So it kind of overtook the yellow. Um, I'm going to grab like a nude color just to soften the pink a little bit. And then I think I'm going to transition back into a yellow. I'm going to do a close up here since we're working on the head portion. And I'm using cotton paper. Uh, I really, really like cotton paper. It is, it is a skill, I think, to use any paper properly and take advantage of its properties. But um, if you learn, like my best advice, or this is just what I did, but I would try to learn watercolor on um, less than ideal paper. Because when you do that, you really have to, like you have to achieve the same techniques or the same patterns and effect that someone would achieve on if they're, you know, using cotton paper. But you, it, it's a lot harder to, for example, create a seamless gradient on non-cotton paper than it is on cotton paper. Like this gradient, it's, it's beautiful, it's flawless, but cotton paper has aided greatly in that. And if you don't have cotton paper and you have to learn on non-cotton paper, it really makes you, um, improves your technique and your skill as an artist. It makes you a lot more versatile. And uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, you will be a better artist because you'll know how to work with different types of materials that may not be the most ideal for whatever you are doing. So that's my two cents on the matter. Um, however, I like my tutorials, the first two years of tutorials on this channel, I did not use cotton paper. I used non-cotton paper and 
not even good non-cotton paper. <laughs> like, it was kind of almost Walmart quality. And somehow I made that work. Like, clearly you guys still watched my tutorial, so it couldn't have been that bad. Um, and then when I switched to cotton paper, I was like, oh my gosh. I have been missing out greatly for a very long time, but I, I could really use the cotton paper to its maximum potential because I had struggled with non-cotton paper for so long. So I already had the skills established to use it properly. Not that I'm not learning, I'm always learning how to use cotton paper better. Um, and obviously, the paintbrushes and the paint that you use react differently as well. The, the brand of cotton paper is also a, a, big, um, a big deal, obviously. So I use Arches watercolor paper, and that's because that's the one that I can go and buy in store. I don't really like buying online if I can help it. It's also the cheapest at Michael's because you they have uh, coupons that you can use. So it's actually an okay price. It's still ridiculous. I still think that the prices of, of cotton paper are just kind of gross. But um, it's an okay price compared to what else you'll get. So what am I getting at? Um, what I'm getting at is that... Uh, I used to use a different brand because I got it, they sent it to me to try out, and I can't remember what it is now, what the name is. It's the same brand um, that I, it's the same brand that I painted in uh, my square sketchbook back in the early days of this channel, and that cotton paper was actually really 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 good I would I would say it's better than arches and I can't it's been a while since I used it so I can't really remember why it was better um, it just I think it just held uh, the watercolor better so this is going to become a cauliflower. I know it. I know it. I know it. So I'm going to go over this whole thing to prevent that from happening. And then I'm going to use my finger over top to dry that and prevent it from becoming a cauliflower. Which is more of an intuitive skill, I think. It's certainly not an advertised watercolor technique. Okay, so this is turning a lot more rainbow than I actually initially intended it to be. I didn't want it to look like that, whatever. Can't do anything about it now. So I'm leaving this portion because that's where I'm going to be painting the flowers, which I will get to in a moment. But here you're really just filling in the body portion of your little guy.
I'm just gonna zoom back out because I fear that I am kind of going off camera a lot. You really have to be careful in this last part because it gets quite narrow. Okay, so the body of this guy is finally done. I kind of felt like it took forever. So we're gonna do the flower whimsical portion. Um, so based on my color scheme, I mean, I kind of went off track with what I was intending. So you can make the decision what colors you want your flowers to be. I'm gonna just start with a pink I believe so I'm going to have my flowers overlapping some of the painted portion so make sure your yours is dry if you're intending on doing the same mine clearly is not which is really not gonna look great but that's me for you nice and impatient I'll just, I'll touch it up later when it dries. So yeah, I'm just painting these petals going in a circle. And then the gaps in the petals, we're gonna fix that um, by either painting more petals or having other flowers overlap. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll show you what I mean in a moment when I'm done. So, these are all not dry or the background was not dry, which is why that is happening. So I've got my main flower here and I do want it to be like, um, uh, specifically going out like this and going out like this. And so instead of having a perfectly round flower, I'm just gonna have a bunch of petals shooting out this way and shooting out this way. I'm gonna try maybe an orange. Uh, maybe mix with a little bit of a yellow orange for the shooting out part. So I'm gonna have long flower petals coming out like this.
and you can even have them coming out from the petals that you just painted. So I could have another flower petal here. Like that. And then I do want to balance that out a little bit. So I'm going to have another one like this overlapping. And it kind of looks like a fire coming out. And then I'm going to have another bunch come in this way. But what color should we use for that portion? I'm wondering. Maybe magenta. Which I'm also almost out of. Not good. So same deal, I'm kind of having them shoot out, but the opposite, or the other direction, sort of to create these little wings, almost, on this seahorse, which I know is absolutely not atom uh, anatomically correct. But what on my channel is? <laughs> this is a whimsical seahorse, after all. Almost reminds me of like a Pegasus or something. I'm gonna have another one coming like this. So that looks that looks balanced on the two sides there. Um, what I want to do is fix these guys, these little things, uh, bleeding petals. So I'm gonna let this completely dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and fix those. Okay. So hopefully that's dry. If it's not, we'll find out. That looks a lot better fixed up. No, nope, this one's starting to bleed again. Ah, it wasn't completely dry. Okay, so this guy looks really nice the way that he is, but I'm trying to figure out how we can spruce this up a little bit, like add something else that makes it pop a little bit more, or should we just leave it the way that it is? I mean, I'll give him an eye. I'll take some black watercolor. Drop an eye there. Mm. Maybe give the flower a little center. Um, 
I'm going to take my quadruple zero, pick up some pink, and maybe have little curly wisps coming, coming from there. That'll add something a little different. I don't really like how those look, actually. They look really poorly painted. I'm gonna try and fix them, but I don't think that was a good decision. So unless you have a really steady hand, maybe don't do this. I'm going to just leave it there before I do anything else weird to this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next tutorial.